before we get started with the video today guys, I want to let you viewers out there know that only a small fraction of you guys currently watching are actually subscribed to my channel, so make sure to smash that subscribe button for instant updates about videos that I release and other announcements, and also smash that like button to help my channel out. Enjoy the video! Yo, what is up guys? It is Samul here, and today I have for you guys an official Asmodeanac hunt guide. I'm going to be covering all the units that are very strong in Asmodeanac, including free-to-play options, artifacts that you need to bring, the stat guidelines you need to hit, and the main mechanics for the boss. Now without further ado, let's just jump into the guide. Now for the boss itself, there are going to be 6 main mechanics. So the first one is going to be a berserk passive or buff that he has. So every 4 hits onto the boss, he will stack a buff on himself that will increase his attack, speed, and defense stats. Now this stacks up to 4 times, and basically if you let it stack to 3 or 4, it will start one-shotting your team. Now this buff is strippable and dispellable though, so it is very very crucial to make sure you can strip and dispel the buff off the boss, so you want to bring at least 2 strippers for this boss. Also, if the boss has 3 or more debuffs, he will fully cleanse himself, and in Asthma Act 13, he will also get an attack buff and cooldown reset with an extra turn. So basically, in A13, um, you want to make sure you limit yourself to 2 debuffs. If you have 3 debuffs on your squad and actually apply it um, more than once actually, you will most likely just die. Um, even if you hit the 3 debuff cap once, you probably die as well. So just make sure your team only has 2 debuffs. Um, one I would recommend being defense break obviously, and the second one is more up in the air. You can bring target, um, decrease attack, blind, um, anything honestly. Just make sure you do not hit 3 debuffs or you will be screwed. Um, also the boss will alternate between a single target attack and an AoE attack. And when he AoE attacks, he will summon 2 eggs. Or when he uses his second AoE attack, because he has 2 AoE attacks, um, one will be in his S3 as well. He will inflict debuffs. Now I'll go over those debuffs in another point later on. Also, when he summons those eggs, um, the boss will have 80% damage reduction from single target attacks until those eggs are dead. So for the most part, when you bring DPS, you're going to want to bring AoE DPS, one to hit the boss um, for 100% damage while the eggs are alive, and also to clear out the eggs, because if the eggs get a turn off, um, the run becomes a lot harder. Just make sure you kill those eggs. And going over the boss's second AoE attack that I mentioned prior that also has debuffs. Um, this AoE attack is actually his S3. It will actually dispel and strip you as well. It can silence and it will detonate bleeds. So the bleeds that are applied from his other AoE attack that he alternates with um, will actually be detonated with his S3. So it is pretty important to actually cleanse these off or as many as you can. Um, he'll do this every three turns. And if you have three or more buffs on a unit, he'll actually just do this on his next turn. So there's, you kind of get punished for having too many buffs on your team. But honestly, this one isn't as bad as too many debuffs because this is pretty manageable if your Soul Weaver has a lot of effect resist so she doesn't get silenced all the time. And last mechanic for the boss is going to be that the boss will cut your team's healing by 50% when he's below 30% HP. So this is kind of like a mini enrage. This one isn't too big of a deal. You just get punished for killing the boss a little slow. This one doesn't really matter too much. Um, just make sure you have enough DPS to kill the eggs. Um, and don't worry too much about dealing too much damage to the boss, it'll just die eventually. And yeah, Azimrak 13 will have 134k HP and 208 speed. So he might seem squishier than Wyvern guys, because he has, you know, about 70% of Wyvern's HP. Um, but actually, he takes longer to kill because of, like I said, he gets a damage reduction buff from single target because of the eggs. And his Berserk will constantly give him defense, so it's actually pretty hard to kill him. He's actually super tanky, um, even though his HP seems really low. The boss also has 80% resist similar to Wyvern, so your units will need 65% effectiveness to make sure that they get the maximum debuff chance on their debuffs. And now, what most of you guys are probably most curious about, what units are good for Azmanac? Now just before we get started, um, I'm separating them into three rules or categories. We're going to have Cleanser and Healer, DPS, and the spell. You guys are probably wondering where's the fourth one? Well, you don't need a fourth. Um, role actually you just double up on one role or bring a unit that can hit multiple roles because these are the only things you actually need for Azmanac. Now keep in mind I have S, A, and B tier for these units. Um, in each tier they're not ranked you know anywhere higher than another unit in that tier. They're all just going to be in the same tier guys. They're very very close to each other. It's hard to actually say which one's better in a lot of situations but if there is one that's really strong I'll let you guys know. So starting with Cleanser and Healers uh, we actually have Tamarin in the S rank for sure. She is probably SSS actually for this um, for this hunt because one she has a heal, she has CR push which is very nice. She has a full cleanser S3 which actually works better than a 
you know, one or two debuff cleanse every, like, three or two turns, right? Because um, the boss will just have one AoE attack that puts all the debuffs and bleeds on you. So you just want one huge cleanse, right? You can even run her on Vile if you want more cleansing. And she also has a force dual attack to help with killing the eggs. So if you run her with, like, a Vildred or RB and S1 in idle form, um, their S1 is AoE, right? So it actually kill the kills the eggs as well. Um, she also has, like I said, an attack buff. And she also has a strip and dispel which is really nice for as because you need them and if your healer has it it's crazy good so she just does everything basically besides dps but i guess she is a pseudo dps because she will bring your dps um which hopefully is aoe when she does her s1 and idol form so very very powerful it is a must run in your as team comp if you have her if not though it's okay in the a tier we have a momo she is a good cleanser good cycler and the best part is you can build her easily on high effect resist to resist the silence from the boss so that you know you don't get rng'd and then you don't you don't have the ability to heal your team if you get silenced so it's very very nice as a backup healer if you don't have tamarin and in the b tier i really don't recommend running anything in the b tier guys but we have angelica angelica's okay she has kind of a cleanser s3 and immunity which is okay but it'll get stripped and her healing's pretty decent um, I would try to stay away from her try to just run a Momo instead. She will be your best bet and Now for your DPS in the Esther. We have a lot guys. There's a lot of good DPS nowadays for Azimnak. Um I'll just go over them quickly though. We have Vildred full AoE like um, on his kit if he s1s right into the eggs and he kills it he will just s2 right after um, you want your s1 to one shot the eggs s2 you actually don't want to one shot the eggs because you get to keep up your attack buff easily that way rb same thing as vildred kind of it's just that he's a little bit worse in my opinion than vildred just because um, he doesn't have the s2 um what's it called you know aoe attack right after so you can't hit twice in a turn um his s3 is pretty nice though because it resets on egg kill the only thing is he has a blind debuff, so that will take one of your debuff slots. You have to be careful when using RB um, that you don't bring another debuffer with him. And next we have Bologna. Bologna is a very powerful DPS for Azmanac as well. She can strip and defense break as well, so that makes her very, very strong. And her AoE damage is pretty nice as well. Just You want to run her with another DPS though, most likely, because um, her S1 is not AoE, and her AoE is kind of conditional, so there might be some runs where she can't kill the eggs and you wipe. Another DPS that's very strong. We have Bomb Model Kana. Bomb Model Kana, very OP for Azimac 13. One of the best DPS, if not the best in my opinion. S1's AoE. She basically has all AoE. She has attack buff for her team, or for herself, and a speed buff, right? So if you're really lacking a good DPS option, I would really just get Bomb Model Kana from Connections as user. Um, one of the best, if not the best, free-to-play option for DPS for Azimac 13. She just completely rocks this boss and is very, very powerful as a DPS here. Landy is a limited unit, but she's very strong as well. Speed buff is really nice. Um, AoE from S3 will one-shot the eggs almost all the time. Um, the only thing is her S1 is single target, so she will lose some damage sometimes for S3 stun up during the eggs. That's why you kind of want to pair with another DPS. But her speed buff is really, really nice, and her S3 just does so much damage and penetrates defense. So even when the boss is berserk, like she actually does a lot of damage. Spectre Tenebria is really nice. You have to just be careful with Poison. Um, she's really good because of the Violin that you can run on her because she's a mage. And because her S1 is essentially a two-target attack, kind of like Vildred and Arby. So very, very powerful. She's also very tanky from her S2 passive, making it so that you don't need as much defensive stats on her. Um, you'll notice that, especially when your DPS are built very squishy, guys, they're going to die really quickly. Spectre Tenebria is just innately tanky, right? Because she takes less damage. Um, she can't be targeted from a single attack, right? Blaze Dingo, very, very powerful tar uh, DPS option as well. Um, he is single target um, in his S1, but the thing is he has some AoE, and he actually has attack buff, invincibility buff, so it makes him pretty tanky. And also, he will provide some off-healing for your team, which is very, very nice in a boss like this, where there's just a lot of damage coming out. Now, for A tier, these are okay as well. Um, I would really recommend running the S tier, because as you can see, there's so many S tier units, and one of them is Bomb Model Kana, which is free, and you get RB for free as well, right? So you might as well just use them. Um, I wouldn't really recommend using A tier either, but they're okay as well. So SSB is okay. You just have to turn your skills off. SSB um, will counter a lot, right? Um, kill the not probably not one shot the eggs, but you know defense break them and do a lot of damage. Um, Kron's really nice as well. Um, he's just S1 bot, right? He just perma AOE attacks if he's buff. Very very strong. Um, the only thing is uh, buffs get stripped, so there's gonna be some turns where. He's not buffed and his S1 will just be a single target attack and that is just really awkward guys. Um, Charlotte's really nice because her S1 is in AoE attack. The only thing is she has um, two debuffs uh, built in so you want to turn off her S3 so that you can land the defense break as well. Uh, Yuna is really nice as a support DPS. All of her abilities are S1. She has attack and speed buff. 
Um, just very strong. The only thing is her damage modifiers are pretty low, so she needs help with the DPSing. But she's a very good support utility DPS because of her buff, buffs with attack buff and speed buff. Um, Strays is really nice as well because he has a strip and it's an AoE attack in his S3 that penetrates defense. Um, the only thing is S1 is single target and I guess it is good because it gives him a CR push but not a consistent DPS. Mostly going to be used as a like backup stripper slash backup DPS. And then in B tier we have Vivian. So Vivian's top tier for one shotting but in just regular runs. Um, not that great in my opinion. Her S2 won't be up for the eggs like half the time. And yeah, her buffs get stripped really quickly. I mean, her buffs are good. Um, her attack buff and immunity buff. And I guess every buff can strip, but mostly just because of her S2 is just kind of inconsistent or inconsistent in the hunt runs that I've seen her in. And then for dispellers, um, we have Isaria. So Isaria is going to be really, really nice because um, for the Berserk buff, Unbuffable works as well. She has Unbuffable and she also has Defense Break. So she is S tier. She also does decent damage with decent modifiers. And she has a skill cooldown reset. So if you run her with Tamarin, um, you just run her with two other DPS or two other units, I guess, that have their skills off. And she'll perma keep Tamarin's idle, idle form up. So very, very powerful if you pair with Tamarin. I'm sure you guys know. Um, just one of the best dispellers for Azamnak, if not the best because of her unbuffable and her defense break capabilities. Um, next, we have Lulika. Lulika is really nice as well because she is a mage. She can run Isla Violin to dispel and strip. She also has defense break in her S1. And she can also make her team actually tankier with her S2. So you can actually run her two ways. You can run her either with skills off or skills on. Um, skills off will actually do more damage, but skills on will actually support your team more. Um, I like running skills on just to be more consistent. Um, the runs aren't that much slower. And Aeros is also an S tier dispeller because one, he's a knight and he can hold Aureus so that he can make your team take less damage. Also, his S1 strip is very, very consistent because he will always target the boss and he will always have a 75% chance to strip as long as you have effect in this. Um, you can turn his skills on or off. With Tamarin Asaria, you'll keep him off um, if you don't have Tamarin Asaria. And if you have a decent amount of strippers, um, you can actually keep his skills on for the force dual attack with the defense break. And also the defense buff for his team will help him um, keep his team up longer. And he also heals himself, so he ma it makes him a pretty tanky Aureus holder. Now for A tier dispellers, I have Falcon or Clurry. She's actually pretty good. Um, she has a lot of off healing in her S2 if she cycles fast. She also has a uh, defense break in her S3 and a strip. The only thing her S3 cooldown is a little long while she cycles fast, so it might not line up with the Berserk. And if it gets 15 percented by the boss and you don't have another stripper with you or a good good Dispeller stripper with you, um, actually the boss will most likely hit three or four stacks and start you know doing a lot of damage. So it's kind of risky, but she's really good when paired with like another stripper Dispeller. Like you can even pair with Aeros and it'd be very strong. Um, they'd be very strong together. They complement each other well. They'll make your team a lot tankier, but you'll just be lacking a little bit of damage. And in B tier, we have Rick Rickerus, Captain Rickerus. He's actually not bad for Asmanac, guys. He has a strip in his S3, um, also defense break. So I think he's not that bad, guys. Um, pretty decent option. The only thing is he has another debuff in his S3. Um, I kind of forgot what it was, but yeah, he has two debuffs, guys. Um, so that's the only bad thing about him. Um, yeah, he's a B tier unit. Don't, don't use him if you can use the other ones and i don't know why you use him because um, you have two units above him in the tier list that are both free to play three star specialty change units that are arguably easier to attain as well so for azimnak guys you'll see that there are a lot of units that you can run so they're going to be a lot of team comps you can run as long as you have an aoe dps a cleanser a healer and a dispel and strip you can run whatever team comp you want you just want to make sure your aoe dps has aoe and s1 preferably because that way when your s2 and s3 aren't up on your dps you can still clear eggs with your s1 um, you really want to make sure you kill those eggs guys and for your fourth unit guys i just recommend having a unit that can either fit multiple roles or help one of your weaker roles so for example luluka right luluka is a strip dispeller because of her isle of Island she can equip as a mage and also she's a dps that can help with egg clearing with her s3 and also single target the boss down with her S1 while defense breaking. Tamarin as well, right? Tamarin can strip and dispel in her S1. She can cleanse and heal. And she can also technically be an AoE DPS in her idle form with her force dual attack given that your DPS has an AoE S1. So below I have some sample comps for you guys. So the first comp at the top left of the sample comps, you'll see Tamarin, Dildred, Asteria, and Aeros. So this is probably one of the most cookie cutter comps that people run in 813. I think it is one of the most used, if not the most used, Basically, you have Tamarin um, to cleanse and heal and dispel and strip for you. Isaria is there as a defense break stripper. 
DPS. Ross is there as a, you know, force dual attack, so technically a DPS as well. You can also dispel and strip and hold Aureus to make the gear requirements on your DPS a little bit lower tanky, tankiness wise. And Villager's there as your main DPS. Um, now, if you don't have Tamron, you can run the A Momo comp at the bottom right, right? This is probably the most free to play comp. You can run like A Momo as your healer slash cleanser, Bomb Model Kana as your main DPS, and then you run the two knights that are also, you know, you have three three stars here, right? With one connection unit. So you can just run this comp and it's very, very free because, yeah, you have two strips, um, two defense breaks, you know, you have a huge AoE DPS and Bomb Model Kana and a cleanse and strip. And even Clurry can help you with your healing because she has a S2 that can heal your team. And you have two knights, right? So you can actually run Aureus and Adam and Shield. So pretty, pretty nice for free to play comps. The run will be a little bit slow, but I think that is the comp I recommend for most free to play units. You can even slot in RB for um, Falcon or Clurry um, as well if you need more damage. And now to go over the artifacts, guys. So you'll see for some units, I have multiple artifacts listed. These are going to be from left to right, best to worst, in my opinion. Um, so let's get started. So with Cleanser and Healers, uh, Mogarod's Tome's really nice for cycling. You'll notice that in A13, um, you really need to cycle turns really fast to keep your team alive. And Potion and Battle's really nice for the um, bleeds that are going to come in to cleanse them. And even the Silences as well. Rod just helps with healing, and Touch of Rekos also similarly to Rod will also help you with some healing. Now if you do, for some reason, run Angelica, Candlestick's nice because Angelica's cooldowns are really short. And if you run Candlestick, she'll have her heal up every turn. But like I said, I really don't recommend running Angelica, guys. Now for your Dispels at the bottom, um, if you're running Flurry or Aeros, um, you're going to want to run Aureus. Um, if you're running both, you want to run Aureus and Adam and Shield. It'll just make your team a lot more tankier. And then for your Dispeller, if you run Lugica, you want to run Isla Violin so she can actually Dispel. Um, without it, she can't actually Dispel. Um, so you actually need this artifact from Hall of Trials. Um, if you're going to run Lugica. Um, Asaria, if you decide to run her, she's a ranger, so you can run multiple options, actually. In my opinion, Sasha Athanes is the best because you're killing eggs constantly, so your team will keep getting a CR push. So I think this one is by far the best. If you don't have it for some reason, though, you can run Rosa Hargana or Infinity Basket from dual attacks. Um, it's not bad as well. You can also run Miss Confile in case your S1 defense break doesn't land. You have an extra chance to actually land the defense break. But that is a limited artifact, and I actually don't recommend that one over the other four star ones. Um, if you run Rickerus, Captain Rickerus, you can actually just run him on DDJ and he'll do fine. Um, build him with some damage and crit damage and he'll do some okay single target damage while being able to strip as well. Now for your AoE DPS or main DPS, you're going to want to run either DDJ to do more damage to the boss. Or you want to run Portrait or X for Tanfa to actually do more damage to the X. So if you're struggling to kill the X and for some reason you've tried everything in your power and your gear power to actually gear units to kill the X but they still can't. Try running Exorcist Tonfa or Portrait if you have it from Guilty Gear, and maybe it'll give them more damage to actually kill the eggs. And for Ranger classes, if you're running like Landy, SSB, Bologna, or any other Ranger, like even Bomb Model Kana, you can run Bloodstone. Uh, Bloodstone will help with your team's healing if you really need it. It'll just make you do less damage. Um, if you're fine on the healing though, you can just run either Daging Joker, Tonfa, or Portrait just for the extra damage. If you're running a Mage, such as S10A, um, you can actually run her on Violin to help strip. Um, if not, and you don't need the strips, you can just run more damage as well, just like the Ranger class by running Daydream Joker, or Tonfa, or Portrait as well. So, let's go over stats now, guys. So, for Azmanac, actually, there's not going to really be too many strict or concrete stat guidelines like Wyvern has. But, in general, for A13, your Cleanser and Healer are going to want 16k HP, 1.2k defense, and about 208 speed. Um, the boss has 208 speed, so you want about similar or higher speed so that you can maintain turn parity with him also if you're running you know tamarin you want 150 percent er if you can so you can have a chance to resist the silence and if you're running a momo you want 200 percent er because you're going to want to res resist the silence as a momo because one her base er is already really high so it's pretty easy to get 200 percent and two a momo's healing is pretty weak it's more about her turn cycling so if you get silence for a turn it can really mess up your your uh, healing cycle and actually what will happen is your team will most likely wipe now for DPS, you're going to want 100% crit chance, 290% crit damage, and 4k attack. This is to make sure that your DPS that you're using can one-shot the eggs. Depending on the unit you use, you might need more or less attacking crit damage. It really depends on what unit you're using and the multipliers. Um, for HP, you're going to want 9k to 10k HP. Um, defense, you want 850 to about like 1k so that you can survive. Because Azimac 13 and I guess Azimac in general has a lot of AoE damage. So your DPS are going to need to be a bit tanky. 
And as a bonus, you can add some speed to your DPS as well. 150 speed is nice if you can get it. Um, even more is even better. Um, but speed is a bonus. It's kind of on the least of your priorities as a DPS because one, you just want to make sure you're tanky enough to survive. And two, you want to make sure you can one-shot those eggs. That's the most important thing for your DPS. Now for your Dispeller, the only thing you really need is 220 speed and 65% effectiveness to make sure that you're fast enough to strip the boss so Berserk doesn't go out of control. And yeah, 65% effectiveness because you need 65% for maximum effect with your debuffs and strips. And also you're going to want to be similarly tanky to your DPS, 9k to 10k HP, 850 to 1k defense, right? And if you're using your Dispeller as a DPS as well, like S10 on violin or Luluka on violin or like Asseria, um, you actually want about 100% crit chance. Um, 230 crit damage is ideal, but you can go with a little less. And 3k attack is also ideal, but a little less is fine. They're mostly there to dispel anyways. Um, but yeah, keep in mind guys, making your units tankier and faster than I suggest will actually make your runs way more consistent. And if you're running an Aureus holder, you want to make sure they're at least 18k HP. The defense doesn't really matter too much because your Aureus damage share actually doesn't get affected by defense. Just make sure your Aureus holders are at 18k plus HP and you will be fine. So that's pretty much it for stats, guys. Let's get into the tips that I have for you guys for Azranak. So I run this hunt a lot. Um, I tested so many different team comps, and this is, these are basically the tips that I've come up with after all my experience with it. So first off, you want to use your gear from Wyvern that has both DPS and tank stats. So, you know, if you're rolling for gear for DPS, you know, it's like attack, speed, crit damage, and it's like health subs, and then rolls like two or three times the health, like, oh man, I can't use this on my DPS anymore that I really wanted to use it on. Well, that's perfect as an gear because your DPS need to be tanky in this boss more so than usual because the boss has so much AoE damage. So yeah, just use those gears on your DPS here and it's actually better than just pure DPS gear. Um, also, you want to make sure your Aureus Holder not the frontline unit because yeah, like I said, the Aureus damage redirect will make your Aureus Holder die and then you'll lose your strip and your Aureus. So very, very important to make sure that they're on the side. Um, if they're super tanky though, then I guess you can have them face tank the boss, but I don't see... A reason why you do that because gearing your cleanser slash healer to you know tank the boss in the front is actually not that hard so yeah it just makes more sense to you know make sure your aureus is on the side and your cleanser and healer is the front line for this hunt now if you're having problems with azonac um, like i said this is a three roll boss so you only need a dps cleanser healer and the speller so you can always use that fourth slot to kind of help you with uh, what problems you're facing so for example, if your DPS are dying too quickly because, you know, they're squishy or you don't have the gear to make them tanky enough, um, you can actually just run, you know, Fruit Fruit Slot, Blaze Dingo, right? Blaze Dingo is a DPS and a healer, so he can actually make your units live longer. Don't have Blaze Dingo? Well, you can run Bloodstone, right? Bloodstone on, like, a Ranger unit if you're running Bomb, Model Kana, or, like, SSB or Bologna. It'll make you heal your units more so that you will not die as much. You can also run an Aureus, right? Aureus will help you because it just soaks damage for you and it'll also make your units take less damage um, and you can also run Aeros and Flurry because Aeros has a defense buff um, and Flurry has a heal on her S2 and at the same time they can hold Aureus and you can even run both of them together for even more tankiness because they can run Adam and Shield and Aureus. Um, are you struggling with DPS to kill the eggs? Well just run RB or Bomb Model Kana. Um, they're both free to play options um, rb is free to play because of moonlight connections if you didn't pick him up um, you can take bomb model kana you just have to do a request she is going to basically carry you in a13 if you pick her up she is very good for clearing eggs and very good for the hunt now are you getting too many stacks of berserk too often well then you can just run some more dispellers right you can run isle of violin on your mage um, you can run ross or flurry as a free to play option because they both have strips um, ross if you really want him to strip a lot you just turn his skills off and he'll just strip every single turn um, and have a 75% chance to strip. So very, very nice. Flurry is a little bit less consistent, but she provides some healing. Um, and she has a you know defense break that is more consistent than Ross's. Um, keep in mind, guys, that you want to make sure that you are not putting more than two debuffs on the boss. So defense break and then choose another debuff on your team. You might have to turn some skills in, um, on and off um, depending on your units. Um, so if you have like an RB, right, you might want to turn his skills off if you're running like a... Isaria, right? Because Isaria has unbuffable and defense break. Um, so you can't use RV's S3 because if S3 blinds, um, then the boss is going to cleanse, counterattack, and then it's not fun, right? Your team's going to die. Um, you also want to make sure that you don't have more than two buffs on your team. Um, if you do, it's okay. It's still winnable when he gets his effect off. But yeah, you still want to try to make sure that you're not at three buffs or more on your team. Um, it's still winnable, but it is still kind of annoying and will make your runs less consistent 
So yeah, that's pretty much it for my Asmanac guide, guys. Um, there's not much to it. You just need to, you know, look at what units you have. Um, run it a few times. You know, you're going to wipe in the beginning for sure. Probably because your DPS are dying too much. And then you're going to have to adjust your team a bit, right? Um, DPS die because they're too squishy or are they dying because Berserk is, you know, getting um, too high, you know? So there's a lot of things that you're going to have to run and, you know, trial. And, um, you know, you just have to run it and just see what problems are um, making your team die. So even if your Asmanac run takes a while though, like five to six minutes, it's fine in the beginning. Um, this hunt just takes a long time in general until you have like a one-shot team or at least like a super highly geared team. So you just have to kind of deal with it. Um, it's not really else much to say. But yeah, Asmanac is a grind, guys. It is not fun to farm compared to Wyvern. Um, but it is a must grind because of the OP sets that come from it, like immunity set and rage set. So yeah. So now I'm actually going to show you my team and what I run and the stats that they are on. Um, so yeah, let's get started and I'll show you guys my A13 run. So this is going to be my 813 team, guys. I have Tamron in the front as my cleanser healer. I have Luluka as my stripper, Dildred as my main DPS, and Aeros as my stripper as well. You can see my villager one shots the eggs. You'll notice my DPS are getting pretty low actually. A13 yeah, does so much AoE damage. Okay, about a three minute run not too bad um actually faster than average i'd say um usually in the start your runs are going to take about like five six seven minutes even it'll take a while a13 is just really tanky so don't worry if your runs take a while once you get better gear you'll actually start uh, be able to run it a lot faster and once you unlock the better units for it, like tamran like luluka right your runs will be a lot quicker and smoother as well um, just getting into a13 is really hard but once you have a team that can run it um, pretty consistently and even though it's slow, like you're at a good point in the game where you can start prepping for PvP. So that's it for my team run, guys. Let's look into my stats on my units. 
So for my Aeros guys, I'm running on Arius. Obviously, um, you want to run him on Arius to help your uh, DPS not die with the damage share. Also, very, very tanky for A13. Um, I use him for Earth Expedition as well. That's why he's very tanky. But the speed is pretty good. It'll make him go a lot so he can strip more with his S1. Um, more defense, break force, dual attacks with his S2. And his effectiveness is more than enough for A13. You only need 65%, so he can land the defense breaks and the S1 strips at max value. It's so pretty good. You can put him a little squishier and even a bit slower if you want, and he'll do the job just fine. Um, you don't have to aim for this stat, the stats that I have here um, for my Aeros. Just aim for the ones that I had prior listed. Um, and now for one of my DPS, Luluka. So Luluka is my stripper slash DPS. Um, so you'll see that she's on Isle of Violin, so she can strip. And she has absurdly high attack and crit damage, to be honest, for a Dispeller because I kind of use her as a pseudo DPS for when the boss has no eggs and when he has no Berserk and his defense broken. Um, she does very, very high damage. She also has more than enough effectiveness because I use her in Expedition as well. So I need 80% effectiveness for Expedition, but you only need 65% for A13. Um, and yeah, you can make your... Um, dispeller or you know your Luka a little bit more faster at the price of more damage it'll make your runs more consistent i just did this for speed and my runs don't really fail because i can't strip anyways because i have three strippers so yeah your speller um, aim for this these stats that i listed before and if you want to make your stripper do more damage you can go for higher attack like i did um, i probably need to drop her attack for more crit damage though i can actually give her more attack but i actually don't want to and i'll go over in a second why i don't so you'll see my villager here Villager's at 3968 attack, 295% um, crit damage, um, decently fast, and just about tanky enough to survive. So I have to have more attack than my um, Luluka because if he has less attack, then actually Luluka will take the force dual attack. And I can't have her do that because I need Villager to clear the eggs when Aeros S2s or Tama S1s, right? Um, so yeah, you'll see that my Villager's on DDJ. You can run him on Tonfa if you're struggling with the eggs and you can't reach the damage threshold. Tonfa will help a lot or Portrait. Um, yeah, you can also drop the speed that I have on my Villager for more damage. Speed is like a luxury for A13. Your DPS um, doesn't really need that much speed, so just needs to be able to kill the eggs, and that's the most, most important thing. Um, and last, we have my healer, Tamarin. So Tamarin is going to be basically the main um, reason why I have her is to cleanse and heal in frontline, and just do everything and carry you in A13. <laughs> so yeah, defense is on point, HP is on point. Speed is a little bit fast as well, so it makes it so my runs are very consistent because she can heal a lot. The only thing I would have to do to make my runs even more consistent is add more effect resist so she can resist the silence. Um, but the effect resist is just there. I don't even know why I have that effect resist on her, to be honest. Um, but yeah, Tamarin is very nice for um, just doing everything for A13. Um, I even have effectiveness on her to help her strip. Um, I use it in Expedition a lot. Um, use her for strip and Expedition a lot. So yeah, 80% effectiveness is really nice for Expedition. It's just on point. You only need 65% for A13 though. Um, you don't even need her to be on effectiveness at all. You don't even need her as a stripper. Even if she doesn't strip consistently, like she's just so broken in her kit that she'll you know, still carry you in A13. Um, also, Magara's Tome, very, very nice for turn cycling to make sure that your you know, team stays healed. So yeah, just, just a really nice Tamron for A13 in my opinion. Um, try to aim for these stats if you can. You can just drop the effectiveness to zero and even the effect resist to zero and try to aim for these stats and you should be fine for A13. Um, for Amomo, you can run these stats as well. Um, you just want to bump up the effect resist to 200%. So yeah, that pretty much covers my A13 guide. Um, I know a lot of you guys have been asking to release this, so you know I finally had the time to release it. Um, let me know down in the comments down below what team comp you run. Um, I'm pretty curious. There's a lot of team comps you can run, and maybe some people um, can look at your comments and understand, you know, and see what team comps they're able to run and take some advice from you guys. Um, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps my channel out a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next video.